Shogun has just hit our screens and it's safe to say that these first two episodes were really interesting to watch. Set in Japan in the 17th century, we saw John Blackthorne and his crew get shipwrecked onto the shores of Japan where he was then taken prisoner. Following the Taiko's death, the Council of Regents have been ruling in place in a disrupted Japan until the heir reaches the age of 16 to rule. But a lack of trust is something which is present amongst the regents. As well as each individual's search for power, it seems as though Catholicism, Protestant, and non-Christian faith are things that are also standing between them and causing division as well. As three languages and three religions seem to be pinned against each other as the direction of Japan is in fate. So I won't hold back any longer. Let's jump into this video and break down all that there was to take away from the first two episodes. Here is Shogun Episode 1 and 2 Ending Explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. Within episode 1 of the show, there were two main things which we saw happening. Following the Taiko's death, we saw that a council of regents was put in place in order to ensure the efficient ruling of the country. This was to be done until the heir, Lord Yechio, turned 16 and was old enough to rule. We saw that there were political differences and unrest amongst the Bushos from each of the five territories and that they all wanted to lay claim to more power and take their place at the top. However, the person that was the most power-hungry seemed to be Lord Ishido, who accused Toronaga of taking Lady Yochiba and that he'd be punished by impeachment for the crimes that he'd been accused of. With this, it also meant that he'd likely be killed. So Toronaga was kind of a dead man walking and on the way out. So the rest of the regents in Osaka weren't too fussed about him because it's almost one less person for them to worry about on their rise to the top. Whilst this was going on, we saw that John Blackthorne had the intention of plundering the Spanish territories, reach Japan, and then open trade to the New World. However, with the Portuguese fleets being present in Japan and spreading Catholicism and the Japanese believing Portugal was the only flag that was in Europe, John was the first Englishman that they saw. With him not being Catholic, but being Protestant, and there being wars amongst Europe that were being fought over the same thing, the divide was clear between the Portuguese, Spanish, and English from the moment that he arrived. John Blackthorne is actually based on a real individual called William Adams, who was a pilot from Kent, England. As we saw in the show, the ship was found with 20 cannon on board, something which was similar, as Williams had 19 when the ship arrived in Japan. Like in the show as well, Portuguese missionary priests claimed that William was a pirate and that he should be executed for that reason. However, that didn't end up happening. It was during this episode where John Blackthorne was taken to Osaka with the intention of meeting Toranaga something which occurred in episode 2. Toronaga had heard of the ship that arrived and wanted Hiromatsu to check it out, because he knew of the risk that would be present if he left. So with John being brought back, he wanted to assess what the threat was. We got an insight into the difference in mindset between John Blackthorne and the men that he met in Japan. For example, Yabashigi. There was a moment where Yabashigi went to rescue Rodriguez, but got caught up in the waves and was on the cusp of drowning when he drew out his blade and was going to end things for himself. But the rope came down at the right moment and he chose not to do so. This was something which John was almost blown away by. When going back to the start of the episode, we saw John speaking with the captain of the ship that he was on moments before he ended things for himself. And at this point, the captain said how John shouldn't be afraid of death, but John viewed it as a coward's way out. However, Rodriguez mentioned that a man choosing when to die is considered the best possible way to die. So it's interesting seeing the two different approaches and how John perceived the both of them differently. There was also a horrific moment in the episode where we saw one of the Englishmen being boiled alive as a way of death, something which was just brutal to watch and it felt like you could feel the horrific pain. Within episode two of the show, we saw more of an alliance being formed and an understanding that was present between John Blackthorne and Toronaga. Toronaga wasn't a religious man, especially not a Catholic, and John was using that to his advantage. He was planting poison in his ears through the use of his words, which went against the Portuguese. Lady Madical was present as a confirmation translator to ensure that the priest was translating correctly. I think this speaks to the fact that Toronaga doesn't necessarily trust the priests in the area. We must remember as well, Toronaga descends from a line of people which were Minwara. They ruled the country for many years and they reached the highest title a mortal could hold, which is the Shogun. As well as that, we also saw in this episode right at the start that the Taiko wanted Toronaga to be the sole regent whilst his son was waiting to come of age. But Toronaga knew that it would throw Japan into even more unrest and cause mass civil war. So he didn't accept the offer. But it is interesting to know now, especially with the way that Ishido is waving his authority and deliberately trying to get rid of the person that the former Taiko wanted. 
Ishida was planning on voting about Toronaga's impeachment, but we saw that the rest of the regents didn't want to vote until the situation with John had been dealt with. They all wanted him to be killed and Ishido signed off on that. However, before John could be killed, Yabashigi led a group to retrieve John and returned him to Toronaga. It was here where the poison was then planted in his ears. He mentioned how the Portuguese and Spanish have divided up Japan and how they feel they could lay claim to the country at any point that they wanted to. He also revealed the secret Portuguese base that was in Macau, one which holds weapons, weapons which were used in the battle following the Taiko's death. So by making the Portuguese the common enemy and saying that he wanted to enlist Toronaga as his ally, and by then also saying, unless I win, when Toronaga said how he should give up because he was outnumbered, I think that garnered some kind of respect between the pair. Toronaga was supposed to sign papers which would have allowed the black ship to leave, but he chose not to as he wanted the Portuguese bases to be investigated, something which caused unrest amongst the priests. Right at the end of the episode, there was an assassination attempt on John, and Ishido was ruled out of the suspect list, but Toronaga seems to know who it could be. I wonder if it could be the Catholic priests. John is a clear threat to their religion, the spreading of it, and the power that they're seeking within the country through playing the long game but I guess we'll find this out in the next episode. Overall review. I thought the first two episodes of the show were really good. I thought it looked stunning, the writing was really solid, and it didn't hold back in the gore, which I quite liked. Plus, I felt like the unrest that was present amongst Japan was something that was shown through the screen well. I thought the balance of all of the different stories was something which was really easy to digest, and by giving us two episodes at once, it made it all the more easier. Whether that be Ashido's claim that he's looking to make, John Blackthorne's time as a prisoner, or Toronaga's plan to find a way to survive and not be killed, the balance of action and smooth storytelling was something that I also thought was delivered extremely well. A lot of the episode was conversation-based, which really allowed us to learn about the characters in more of an indirect way. But there would occasionally be moments where you'd just be sprung into action. For example, the ship being caught up in a storm, Yabashigi being injured whilst trying to save Rodriguez, or the assassination attempt at the end of episode 2. I did wonder whether or not the show was going to be multilingual, and I'm glad that it is. It feels like shows were a lot less afraid of using different languages now. And I'm glad, because it allows the show to feel more authentic. Although we are hearing Portuguese in English, which is a bit strange, but I suppose maybe they wanted English amongst it? The fear that John Blackthorne is trying to inflict in Toronaga's mind with regards to the Portuguese to benefit himself is something which I thought was entertaining to see. John Blackthorne has his own motives for being in Japan, but they've not been properly showcased. Hearing him call the people that he came across as savages the moment he laid his eyes on them, when in turn we heard from Rodriguez that John carried out savage-like behavior, it was a moment which I thought showed how it was almost one rule for him and another for the people that he'd never stumbled across before, just because it was different to him. This was the perfect start to the show and I'm really intrigued to see how it's going to develop and how good it's going to get. With Civil War being on the horizon and the Council of Regents most likely turning on each other, I think this was merely an insight into what's to come and the action that we're going to see. So, there you have it. Shogun Episode 1 and 2 Ending Explained.